one person, one, we've got one person. <laughs> um, so, everyone, let's Sebastian Marks, welcome back to the stage. Woo! <laughs> one person. Uh, I'm tell her my jokes. <laughs> uh, I, I really, that's, like, people are drinking tonight, right? Like, who are drinking? Who, raise your hand if you like alcohol, uh, if you drink alcohol. Yeah. Everyone, good. Uh, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, who, who here tonight uh, smokes pot? Woo! Grass, <laughs> Five of us, okay. <laughs> Sorry, perhaps it's an awkward question. Um, <laughs> How many people here tonight uh, have a friend who smokes pot? <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> there we go, a bit more. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but in French language, the word alcohol is a masculine word. And then the French are right, because alcohol brings out in us an active, outward, macho energy. On the other hand, uh, pot, in, in French, la boue, is a feminine word. And they're right, because pot brings out in us a passive, inward, oh, no. sensual energy. With alcohol, we do things. We shout. Woo! We fight. We vomit. <laughs> With power, just hard. We stare. We listen. <laughs> we eat. <laughs> they have the opposite effects on us. With alcohol, we say, It's your problem. With pot, we say, what's my problem? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you brought in smoke pot. Good. Uh, I, I was watching recently a documentary um, on, on the legalization or the illegalization of, of marijuana called Grass, I think is the name of the documentary. And it's interesting because they showed like lots of footage um, of like throughout the, the, like, the 50s and the 40s of like propaganda against pot. And, and one of them, showed like, you know, if you smoke pot, uh, you know, and they showed like a teenager, like, you will take a gun and put it to your head and pull the trigger. <laughs> and our, what's funny about that is that our reaction as Americans is to make the pot illegal. <laughs> and not the fucking gun! <laughs> I like, uh, so that's the thing, like, it's normal. It's like, oh yeah, pot should be illegal. Uh, because, okay, anyway, <laughs> no joke there, just politics. Uh, I mean, how many people drinking wine? Do we have wine drinkers? People like wine? Yes, like, we yeah, have mostly wine. Um, I, I, I love wine. I'm in France for the wine. I drink at least uh, two glasses a day. Um, but I'm not worried about becoming an alcoholic because in, in France, wine is not alcohol. <laughs> it's a common movement, like mustard or pepper. <laughs> and another reason why I drink so much wine here is because in, in France, wine is cheaper than M&M's. <laughs> <laughs> and if you go to a restaurant or a grocery and you order a glass of wine, it's cheaper than tea. Yeah. <laughs> it's cheaper than... This means it costs less to make wine in France than this to boil water. <laughs> so for breakfast, I have wine. <laughs> Cheaper. Um, and I, I, I think I've had the best wine in my life in France. I think I think France makes the best wine in the world. But they also make the worst wine in the world. I'm talking about the wine that just says wine on the bottle, nothing else. The kind of wine that when you drink it, it hurts. And so you spit it out, and it burns a hole in the <laughs> I don't know the wine that you're embarrassed to bring to parties. You like hide under your shirt and you put it in the corner. But you have to bring a bottle of wine if you're ever invited to a house party in France. N'est-ce pas, le français? Right? It's your entrance ticket into the party. You can show up with a kilo of cocaine, three strippers, and a pop. If you do not have a bottle of wine, you're not getting it, okay? What it is, nobody is bringing good wine to these parties. It's always this awful, awful wine, which is fine. But that means that if you're hosting the party, by the end of the night, you're stuck with like a dozen unopened bottles of shitty wine that you wouldn't put in a boof boogie more for Hitler, okay? You wouldn't wish this wine on anyone. So what do you do with all these unopened bottles of shitty wine? You bring them to other parties! <laughs> Bottles of wine touring France, <laughs> going from party to party for years <laughs> until the shitty wine gets good. 
Uh, but thankfully, you know, thankfully, I'm not addicted to either of those drugs, not pot, no, nor alcohol. There's, all, there's only one drug I am addicted to, and this is the reason why I can never move back to the States. It's because, because I'm addicted to unpasteurized cheese. <laughs> it's my drug now. Uh, and the, the Fr French, uh, France is a business country for cheese, let's be honest. Uh, in the United States, when we think about cheese, we think about this, like, Orange, neon, thinly sliced, pre-packaged stuff. Okay, like, like this cheese is, is made in the same factory where we make condoms. Okay, <laughs> it's the same odor and texture. The package is impossible to open. Okay? And, and if American cheese is really sterile, French cheese is like sex. It's raw. Goes well with wine. It's even better when it smells like wild beasts. <laughs> I just there's 350 kinds of cheese here. It's insane. It's the only place in the world I've seen someone in, in you know, these are like in a supermarket, I don't even notice, they're like just aisles dedicated just to cheese. It's the only place I've seen someone stand in front of a wall of cheese and say, there's not much selection here. Which is all it's like. The only place in the, in the world I've seen. And, and the thing is, like, it's so, like, I become addicted to unpasteurized cheese now. Because you have, all the cheese in the States has to be pasteurized. I don't know if you know. And, like, I, I love, I mean, like, the, you know, the, the more, you know, raw uh, it is, the better it is for me. And, and, like, I realize that, like, if unpasteurized cheese is my drug, this means France is my dealer. <laughs> but he's kind of like a small time street dealer that only has like one option. He's a hardcore, he's like a Scarface kind of dealer. And then, the kind of you have to go to like a chateau to visit, like knock on a weird door, and like have a password, like affinage or something like that. You'd be all badass there sitting on a comfortable couch, you know, like, yeah, some like strippers probably around him. <laughs> Once passed out on blue cheese, you got like Rockford coming out of your nose. <laughs> go up to him and say, hey man. Got some Conte? <laughs> yeah, I got some Conte, man. What kind of Conte you want? I got six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. Be all badass with many tattoos, one of a laughing cow. And <laughs>